find um, all those who are invited individuals to our New Beginners Bible, Bible study that um, that will continue on Sunday. Um, Ella Thompson, that's true, on Sunday? Is it, the, the, the Bible class will continue on Sunday? Uh, at at 6.30, we are asking you, if you have, know someone who needs to know more about the Bible, about the, what the church teaches, please direct them to the New Beginners Bible study on Sunday evening at, um, at 6.30. Sometimes we have, uh, we have 40 people or so online. So it's actually quite a successful Bible study group, and we thank Ella Thompson for the good work he's doing uh, with this. Uh, please um, continue to support our online prayer meeting. Um, we are still on Zoom. All the information is online that you can tune in at 7.30 on Wednesdays. Let us continue to come together as a church and pray together. Um, and we do believe that much prayer, much what? Much power. Now, as Health Ministries Day today, um, our Health Ministries Department, they have planned a very special presentation for us on Zoom this afternoon at 5.30, Immunity and Detoxification. And with me, Tran, and Michelle Ching, and... Um, you will enjoy the presentation is on the screen as you can see the the um passcode and the id so everyone can tune in at 5 30 and let us have uh, an, an enjoyable time now we need some help you don't have to be strong but you do need to um well let me not say that part we we need some help tomorrow at 9 o'clock, our pathfinders need to unload much of the trailer outside to get their stuff. It's buried deep in the trailer. And Ella Perry says he can't do it by himself. And he's begging for help. He asked me to plead with you. Um, you don't have to be male. There are many strong women outside there. And... Um, so we need help tomorrow. Please come out and make Sister Perry happy um, so she can get her stuff as buried in the trailer. Now, our young adults don't think that they are really um, not um, in favor of camp meeting. They are, but they want to have camp meeting in a retreat kind of a way. And so our young adults will be having their retreat um, August 5th, August 7th, at the YMCA Cedar Glen Outdoor Center in Schomburg. And um, the cost is $3.50 for the, week, for the weekend. It's very affordable. Uh, they had it there a few years ago, had a good time. And the, their theme is the same as camp meeting, together with God. So they are going to be um, enjoying camp meeting in a different kind of a way. We want to invite our young adults to please go, because there it is right there, you all can afford it. Enjoy um, the, the, the money God has given to you. Spend it well, well and wisely and go on the retreat. And Sister Tamara will be very happy with you. And finally, our seniors. Our seniors will be going to Nickel Beach on August 17th. But this is not for the seniors alone. It's for the church. They still have some seats available. And so if you'd like to go to Nickelika Beach, please see Ella Herlock, or Sister Faye um, Lawrence, and they will direct you as to how you can be part of this. Um, we thank God for what he's doing in the church, what he's doing with each of us, and we praise God that we can be here in church to celebrate God's Sabbath, but also to celebrate the health that God has given to us. We must not take that for granted. Every day we get, let us just thank God for the privilege to, to move and to have our being as it were. Well, we do have Sister um, Sean Dean um, Walters. Brother Sean Dean Walters? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to have a story now. So let's invite um, 
Sean, you need to come forward. Um, poetry and story this morning. Uh, good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, today's children's story will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 to 22. And he says, When Saul came back from fighting the Philistines, he was told that David was in the wilderness near Engai. Saul took 3,000 of the best soldiers in Israel and went looking for David and his men east of wild goat rocks. He came to a cave close to some sheep fence by the road and went in to relieve himself. It happened to be very, very cave in which David and his men were hiding far back in the cave. They said to him, This is your chance. The Lord has told you that he will put your enemy in your power and you could do to him whatever you wanted to. David crept over and cut off a piece of Saul's robe without Saul's knowing. But then David's con conscience began to hurt, and he said to his men, May the Lord keep me from doing any harm to my master, whom the Lord chose as king. I must not harm him in the least, because he is a king chosen by the Lord. So David convinced his men that they should not attack Saul. Saul got up, left the cave, and started away. Then David went out after him and called to him, your majesty, Saul turned around, and David bowed down to the ground in respect and said, Why do you listen to people who say that I'm trying to harm you? You can see for yourself that just now in the cave the Lord put you in my power. Some of my men told me to kill you, but I feel sorry for you, and, I, and said that I would not harm you in the least, because you are the, you are the one whom the Lord chose to be king. Look! My father, look at the piece of your robe I'm holding. I could have killed you, but instead I only cut this off. This should convince you that I have no thought of rebelling against you or of harming you. You are hunting me down to kill me. Even though I have not done you any wrong, may the Lord judge you. Which one of us is wrong? May he punish you for your action against me, for I will not harm you in the least. You know the old saying, evil is done only by evil people. And so I will not harm you. Look at what the king of Israel is trying to kill you. Look at what he's chasing, a dead dog, a flea. The Lord will judge and he will decide which one of us is wrong. May he look into the matter, defend me and save me from you. When David had finished speaking, Saul said, Is that really you, David, my son? And he started crying. Then he said to David, You're right, and I'm wrong. You have been so good to me while I've, been, while I've done such wrong to you. Today you have shown how good you are to me, because you did not kill me, even though the Lord put me in your power. How often does someone catch an enemy and then let him get away unharmed? The Lord bless you for what you have done to me today. Now I'm sure that you will be king of Israel and that the kingdom will continue under your rule. But promise me in the Lord's name that you will spare my descendants so that my name and my family's name will not be completely forgotten. David promised that he would. Then Saul went back home and David and his men went back to their hiding place. There are four points that stood out for me from the story. One, we should never be too quick to act based on what we hear about another person. We should pray every day for a heart of forgiveness. Evil is only done by evil people. God is and will be our judge for all our sins. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that we will all have a heart like yours, one that is full of love and forgiveness. 
Thank you for listening to my prayer, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone online. And the word of God said, all the tide of the land, whether of the seeds of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Bringing all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be food in my house or prove me now is this says the lord of hosts if i will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out you such blessing there that's there will not be room enough to receive it brothers and sisters bring all the tithes into the storehouse there is different ways to bring the tithes into the storehouse. We can do it on Wednesday at 4.30. Someone will be here from 4.30 onward. We can do Adventist giving half, or we can do it on the church website or e-transfer. So as I'm about to pray, once I pray, you are welcome to come forward and bring your tithe into the storehouse. There's a box on my right, and there's one on the left. Let us pray. Ho most and ask some God, we are worthy to be praised. We want to thank you, Lord, for the privileges that we have to be working. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to bring your tithes into the storehouse. And for those, O oh Lord, who are not working, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will pour out the Holy Spirit upon them and that you will provide for them that when that time should come, they will be able to bring their tithes and offering into the storehouse. So we thank you, Lord, for all the blessing that you have poured upon your people. And I pray now that each and every one of us, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, will have a blessed day. Thank you for being our Father. Amen.
Happy Sabbath. Can, can the congregation please stand up? The scripture reading will be taken from Mark 5, verse 21 to 24. Now, now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus name by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on hers, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and, had, and a great multitude follow him, followed him and thronged him. Jesus was still speaking to her when some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. The man said, your daughter is dead. Now there is no need to bother the teacher. But Jesus paid no attention to what the man said. He said to the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, only believe. Jesus let Peter, James, John, the brother of James, to go with him to Jairus' house. They came to the house of the synagogue ruler, and Jesus found many people there crying loudly. There was much confusion. Jesus answered the house and said to the people, why are you crying and making so much noise? This child is not dead, but she's only sleeping. They laughed at Jesus. He told all the people to leave. Then he went to the room where the child was. He took the father and mother and his three followers into the room with him. Then he took hold of the girl's hand and said to her, Tala Tala Kuma, the meaning is, little girl, I tell you to stand up. And the girl stood right up and began walking. She was 12 years old. Her father and mother and the followers were amazed. Jesus gave the father and mother strict orders not to tell people about it. Then he told them to give the girl some food. The Lord blessed the reading of his holy word. Happy Sabbath, Church. You know, Sabbath after Sabbath, we gather here for different reasons. One of the main reasons we gather is to encourage each other and to pray with each other. Some of us have Thanksgiving this morning. Some of us have been battered and bruised during the course of the week. Some of us have been lost in the cracks of society, but that's okay. God knows your name. You're not forgotten. And so this morning, I'm going to invite you, after we sing, My Soul is Thirsty, that if you are so inclined, join me at the altar so we can pray together. My soul is thirsty. My soul Oh, 
heads reverently. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your high and holy name. Indeed, Lord, we're so, so grateful to you this morning for your mercies, your grace and your mercy that has brought us through another week. We have no words, Lord, to thank you. But we feebly lift our hearts, Lord, to thank you for your patience, for your tolerance, for the way you guided us, for the way you protected us, for the way you provided for us during the course of this week. Some of us, we didn't know we would make it through the week, but you stood by us. You were there just in time to deliver us. Some have come with testimonies this morning. Some have come with grief and sorrow. But Lord, you know their names. You know the addresses. You know the situations. You know the cause of our trials. You never intended for us to live in a sinful world. And so, Lord, we thank you for Calvary where we can lift our eyes to Calvary and we can feel some relief. Knowing that there is someone who cares. Knowing that there is a great physician who is never tired of hearing our words. Never disappointing us never failing us and so father on this health emphasis day you want us to be holy thine and so often we sing that song lord but we hold back on what you want us to give to you so today lord may you help us that even as we gather in your courts we will recognize that you want us to be living sacrifices you want us to give it to you all. We sing all to Jesus, I surrender. So help us, Lord, to truly understand the meaning of those words and to turn it over to you wholly. Father, your children are here. They have come to the altar because, Lord, they know that they want to have a closer walk with you. They want to have that experience that only you can give. Just as are their faces are different, Lord, so the different situations. But, but God, you know everything. You are able. And that is why we come to you in total dependence. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. We thank you for what you will do. And we thank you, Lord, for even the answers to our prayers that we are still waiting on. Because we know that when you come through, it will be just right. Father, you have sent us a maidservant to refresh us, to rejuvenate us, to encourage us today, to break fresh bread to us that will nourish our souls. So as we Pray for her, Lord. We ask that you will give her that special anointing so that when she speaks, Father, souls will be born for your kingdom. Lives will be changed. Father, whatever we fail of ask you today because of our limited understanding, we leave it to your wisdom that you will continue to lead us and to guide us and to protect us. But most of all, Lord, May you grant us that place in your kingdom when you burst the eastern skies. Father, you say that it is going to be a dreadful day. The earth is going to reel as a stubble. Men will run to rocks and mountains saying, fall on us. May you help, Lord, that we will not be in that number. But we will be able to hail you as our personal savior from sin and say, lo, Lo, this is my God. I have waited for him. 
and he will save me. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What I call um, our speaker for today, I'm not sure what she had planned for today in her schedule, but she said these words, Pastor Mary, I can't say no to you. I wish more members would say that in this church. Um, so very happy to welcome Pastor Elder um, Dean Lashington, who is a graduate from three universities. She's a graduate from Oakwood University with a master's in um, pastoral studies. She's also a, a graduate from Wilfrid Laurier University with um, a master's in social work. And she's also a graduate from the University of West Indies, which is a Bachelor of Science degree. So she's academically qualified to stand here and speak to us today. But more than being academic, academically qualified, she's also spiritually qualified. Um, and I should say to you that she's also a, currently a doctoral student in, in the Doctor of Ministry program in leadership. She's qualified to stand there because she's not only a trained pastor, she's an ordained elder of the church. She's passionate about Jesus and, um, and the church, loves the church. In fact, actually, when I spoke to um, her senior pastor, Pastor Ewan, he says, he says, man, she's my assistant. When I'm in a jam, there's no one else to turn to but her. She's always going to take me out of a jam. So she's a minute person, always ready. And we are so thankful that she's ready for the task that God has called her for today. Um, not in herself, but because she has spent time. In fact, actually, <laughs> I called her and I said, How are you doing? She said, I'm by the lake just preparing, you know, as the Lord was. Um, in peace and tranquility. Um, Sister, uh, Pastor Elder Lashington, um, her favorite hymn is, All the way my Savior leads me. That's a good hymn. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has what? Been my guide. Also, um, her motto is, His praise shall always be in my mouth. There is so much that we all have to praise God for. And every chance we get, especially on a day like today, when we celebrate health, we must take time to praise the Lord. And her favorite scripture is, all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. So we're very happy to have um, um, Elder Pastor Lashen told us this, this morning. I know that God has given to her a message for us um, entitled Believe Kills, Believe Cures, Keep Believing. We await this message. I know that um, the Lord has laid this message in her heart to share with us today. She has prepared herself. I should say that she's married with three sons. Um, I don't think any is married yet. Uh, no, none married yet. The young, young, young people. <laughs> not marriage of age. <laughs> she said not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay, all right. So we can't advertise them yet for marriage, but um, we can certainly um, invite their mother, God's servant today, to come to the podium to present God's word. Before she comes, though. Um, we're very happy to invite our praise team to prepare our hearts 
for this message as God speaks to us through his servant, Pastor Lashington. Amen. Bless the Lord. Happy Sabbath, church. This is the time where we sing praises to our God, sing praises to our King. I don't know about you, but ah, he's just so good. He's just so good. And um, we're going to sing about seeing the blessings of God. When people look at you, can they see how God has poured his favor on your life? And when you look back over your life, are you just in awe about the goodness of God and what he has done? We want people to come and see what the Lord has done for us. We want him to share the goodness of God just in how we live. So see what the Lord has done. He's been so good. He's a mighty good God. We're going to give praises to him today. know this song. It says, see what the Lord has done for us and see what a mighty God he is. I invite you to praise however you feel. It says, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God he is. Say, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done for us. What the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God. What a mighty God is. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done for us. See what a mighty God is. The walls. The walls are tumbling. The walls are tumbling. The walls are tumbling down. So let's just praise His holy name. Save the walls. The walls are tumbling. The walls are tumbling. The walls are tumbling down, so let's go. Let's take it up. Oh, see what the Lord has done for and us. And see what a mighty God. 
opened doors for me. He opened doors for me. He opened doors for me. And you know what it is? He put his hand on me. He put his hand on me. about you but oh, I'm so glad that I know the God that we serve it means that whenever we're going through something there's something higher there's something bigger there's someone who is above all who knows your name he holds our every moment he calms whatever seas whatever storms that might be rough when you're going through the fire he is there he's that fourth person he heals disease, disease in the body, disease in your mind, disease in your soul. Trust in him. Trust in him. You hold my every moment and you calm my raging seas. God, you walk with me.
we know who garment it is, who we serve, who is all powerful. I don't know about you, but that's Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul because I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made it whole. Oh, oh, it is 
is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. If it is Jesus in your soul, say, It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched. For I have touched the hem of his garment. And his blood. And his blood has made. If you know that Jesus that we're singing about, I say, oh, it is. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched yes. the hem of his garment and his blood has Because God restores. He restores your mind. He restores your soul. And you sitting here today means you are a living testimony. You are a living testimony that God restores. Oh, God restores. You know this song. If he's restored your life, just sing this in worship to our God most high. Can we say that God restores right now? Say God restores. God restores. Say God restores. God restores. We thank you, God. Say God restores. God restores. Another 
you and your music ministry. Praise God for you and your music ministry. Did Pastor Myrie give you my topic? Kind of. He didn't give you the topic and yet the songs are so perfectly aligned. The Holy Spirit is in this place. I said the Holy Spirit. I sang so much. I think I've lost my voice. I don't think I can preach the way I normally preach with power because guess what? I sang so much. Praise the Lord for you. Thank you, Rochelle Myrie, for your music ministry. Congratulations to the Ruth Seventh-day Adventist Church. You're going to be celebrating 25 years. 25 years, good for you. I can see the blessing of the Lord on this congregation. Praise God. I love this church so much, I'm telling you. I don't want to tell you the thoughts that are going through my mind. How long did it take us to get here, Kiran? How long? An hour? Think we can do that? Uh, I'm telling you. Today we are going to be looking at, thank you Pastor Mary for giving me the opportunity and thank you to God Almighty for the opportunity to serve him. It's an awesome privilege to speak to God's people. Do you understand? When you're speaking to God's people, you need to be under the unction of the Holy Spirit. When you're speaking to God's people, sometimes you're attacked and you're in the fire and the crucible. But keep faithful. Today we're looking at Mark 5. I haven't forgotten to pray. If I forget to pray, Sister Herlock, you remind me, okay? Just stand up, Carmel, and say, oh, we need to pray. Mark 5, I love this chapter of Mark. But this is where Jesus shows concerns, his concern for girls. If you're a girl, wave your hand. This is where Jesus shows his concern for women. Mark 5, little girls and big girls. God cares about adult issues and he also cares about children issues. Let me tell you why I love Mark 5. Mark 5 is where Jesus shows his attitude about girls' issues, current issues and historical issues. Mark 5 is where Jesus calls women daughter. He has never called any man son. Mark 5, I love Mark 5. For Jesus identifies with us girls who have issues. And when I look at Mark 5, there's something about it, Pastor Mary. When you read the, the passage they taught us at Oakwood University, when you're going to preach, you must look at the passage with suspicion. And as I looked at Mark 5 with suspicion, I haven't forgotten to pray. Sister Pauline Bennett. I haven't forgotten to pray. It says so many times over the title and the position of a man. He was the ruler of the synagogue. His name was Jairus. And he had responsibility over the spiritual and business affairs of the synagogue in those times. He was a wealthy man, prominent and affluential. Probably he may have been the elder. Respected layman. He had resources, was a public figure. And so I am going to call Jairus, Elder Jairus. Do you know why, Pastor Mary? Because Mark 5 tells me that his position and his title is important to the story. Sometimes positions and titles are important to the story. And so today we're going to look at belief kills. 
Belief cures. Keep believing. I cannot believe that you did not know the topic of the sermon. Nevertheless, let us pray. Father God, speak to your people today. Who am I? Just a worthless lump of clay? I give you my everything. My tongue, my brain, my vocal cord, my lungs, my hands, everything God I was made for you to use. Use me mightily today. May I speak that which I ought to say. May they hear the voice of Jesus Christ talking to their hearts. Encourage your people today, O oh God, in Jesus' name, amen. And so I'm going to invite you to turn your Bibles to Mark 5. Mark 5. We're going to look at verse 21 to 24 and 35 to 43. The story is about Jairus. I call him Elder Jairus, for his position is important to the story. Sometimes I call him Pastor Jairus. Nevertheless, Elder Jairus had only one child, one daughter. Luke 8, 42 says he had only one daughter. Just like you, Pastor Mary. I'm, don't, I'm not assuming anything. I just think I know you have only one daughter. Huh? So Elder Jairus went to Jesus to ask that his only daughter be made whole, not just well. Be made whole. When you look at the translation, it doesn't say well, it says whole. Because God knows, Jesus knows that health is more than the absence of disease. Health includes not just absence of disease, but wholeness and well-being. And so Elder Jairus went, public figure, and the, the scripture says in verse 23 that he earnestly begged not requested, not asked, not petitioned. The Bible says he begged. And you can hear the desperation and the emotion in the use of the word beg. Beg without shame. Just imagine you have one child, one girl, 12 years old. Any 12 years old people in the congregation? You're 12 years old? Wave your hand if you're 12, 11, 10. Yes, I see one over there. Anyone with a 12-year-old child knows the dreams that you have for that child. You start to say she looks like her father. She's daddy's girl like me. She has her father's eyes. She has her father's fingers. She has her father's hair or her father's toes. And you dream of your one 12 year old daughter, what she's gonna become. Lawyer, doctor, Indian chief or pastor. 2022, the sky's the limit for your little girl or your little boy. And you can't imagine fathers. We're the fathers that have daughters. You can't imagine giving her away on her wedding day. My father gave me away so long I can't even remember it and every day he still fret for me. How are you doing? How is this and how is that? Love your daughter. You're thinking when she's, it's time for her to marry Pastor Mary, you're going to give her the biggest fufu wedding root church has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Starting to save for it already, going to mortgage the house to give her an education, to give her the biggest and the best fufu wedding anybody ever see. And then one day, she feels sick especially in COVID, little girl feels sick. And you do everything as a parent for her to feel better. You took her to the best doctor for you have money, money is no issue. You're a ruler in the synagogue. You gave her the best medication. You try all kind of herb. The only thing you don't try is what you're not supposed to try. Huh? And still she's not getting better. Instead of getting better, She's getting worse. The sicker that child gets is the more desperate you get. I have that big old man there. And the other day he was coughing. And I said, I hope it's not the COVID because I have to catch it because I'm going to take care of you. 
Love your kids. You love them. Huh? Just imagine after you did all of this, the child stopped walking. Huh? I want to cry already as a mother. Stop walking. Huh? Stop walking and starting to lie down. People from the Caribbean would say, lie down, lie down, all over the place. Hmm? Just imagine she gets so weak, she stopped talking, huh? Stop eating, and then she stopped opening her eyes. Huh? You want your child to enjoy good. Let me tell you something, you don't know love till you have a child. When you have a child, it, it's a different ball game. Huh. Eventually, Pastor Jairus, I call him, call him that, his daughter lay dying. And then he heard about Jesus Christ. Rochelle's Jesus Christ. He heard Jesus Christ was in town. He heard that this same Jesus, a couple of Sabbaths ago, he healed a man with a withered hand. And he heard that this same Jesus, a couple, couple of weeks ago, healed somebody who was demon-possessed. And he heard that this same Jesus is here. Let me tell you something. Jairus, whether it's Pastor Jairus, President Jairus, Elder Jairus, whatever title you want to give him. He threw caution to the wind, threw shame to the wind, and threw down himself prostrate before God. Started to beg God. Do something, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, Jesus, lay your hand on her that she may be healed. She may live and be made whole. Jairus was a desperate dad. He explains the situation to Jesus Christ, the condition to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is such a good healer. Eh? Rochelle, from you do that singing, I just keep looking at you. You're my inspiration today. Jesus said he will come and heal the girl because he's the God who heals. He's the healing God. He's a willing healer. He said he will come. Jesus showed that when the leper came to him and said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. What did Jesus say? I am willing. When the centurion came and said, my servant is paralyzed with whatever, what did Jesus say? I will come and heal him. Peter's mother-in-law, he healed her. Huh? People who have demons, he just says a word, one word with two letters, go. And paralytic demons have to flee at the word of Jesus Christ. For he's the Lord, strong and mighty and mighty in battle. Jesus Christ makes dumb demons speak and deaf demons hear. At the name of Jesus, he is the mighty healer. Let me tell you something about healing. Don't be fooled. Jesus Christ heal and the doctors collect the money. Hear me say? Jesus Christ heals and specialists get the credit. He is the healer. Every healing comes from him. Jesus was moved with compassion. And he starts to go to Elder Jairus' house, you know, Rochelle. You know, Brittany, don't feel left out. Huh? Don't feel left. Sometimes I don't remember the names, Brittany. Mm -hmm. But he starts to go, going to heal her, going to make her whole. And then something happens. Huh? Somebody come to Jesus and touch him, and Jesus stop. For the next 10 verses, Sister Herlock, for the next 10 verses, the healing of poor Elder Jairus' daughter is put on pause. Hmm? I cannot imagine the anxiety that Elder Jairus went through when Jesus paused, and I miss nobody. You know why I say she's a miss nobody? Carmel, because the Bible doesn't give her a name. The Bible doesn't give her a title. The Bible only gives her a condition that nobody wanted. <laughs> and I can hear Jairus, Pastor Jairus saying, really lady, 
Really? Bad timing, sister. Miss nobody, you have your issue for the past 12 years, and now Jesus is on his way to heal my daughter, and you come touching him, huh? Bad timing, lady. Bad timing, Miss Nobody. But there's no bad time with Jesus Christ. With God, all timing is perfect timing. If you could see the end from the beginning, everything he does is perfect. Just and true are your ways, O oh, most high God. Miss Jairus, Pastor Jairus, had to wait. He had to wait while Jesus dealt with other people's issues. And he had to watch as Jesus dealt with other people's issues. And it must have been a hard wait, a painful wait. And then while he was waiting, as it can't get any worse, he hears those words, your daughter, I can't even say it, your daughter, is dead. Hmm. Let me tell you something. I took one of those boys. He ran to the dentist to take out wisdom teeth, and they had to sedate him. And I was in there with them, and when Dr. Green did the sedation on Kieran, and he, I see that the child was unconscious. It's time for them to... I couldn't stay in the room. I had to come out of the room couldn't stand to see my boy in an unconscious state. Can I imagine Pastor Jairus hearing those words? Your daughter is dead. But Jesus shot back. You know, Jesus is sweet. He shot back with words of encouragement and hope. Jesus encourages and says, do not be afraid. Only only believe. Jesus gave wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty te te teaching Jairus faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Many of us have gone to Jesus with the conditions of our children. Children in the community, children in your house, children in your family. Some of them are sick. Some of them are lost. Some of them are dying. Some of them are sick, lost, and dying. Without divine intervention, it might be too late. And we have begged God over and over, God, that boy, God, that child that you give me, God, that daughter, she's not well. She's not standing up. She's not walking on the paths of righteousness. She's not ingesting and digesting spiritual food so she can be whole. When we look at some of our children, there is sign of spiritual malnutrition, spiritually weak and lethargic. Some are experiencing all kinds of challenges. Most are liable to break under pressure. Some children are weak mentally, Spiritually and physically, some of our children, let me tell you the truth, they are so sick that they make us sick with worry and fret. Huh? And we have come to Jesus with them, but we have to wait for 10 verses while Jesus takes care of other people's issues. But you know, it teaches me a lesson. You know what the lesson is? I have to come back and preach a part two here in our women's ministry day. You know what the lesson teaches me? Not because you have clout. Not because you have title and big degrees. Not because you're the ruler of the synagogue means you get preferential treatment with Jesus Christ. God is no respecter of persons. Ruler of synagogue or no ruler of synagogue, it don't matter. God is a God for all people. No name brand people, God hears them. No position brand people, God hears them. No title brand people, God hears them. Whether they have respect 
from the community, from the church, from the family. That's up to you. They have respect from Jesus Christ. He died for every one of the Miss Nobodies. He also hears their requests. And he speaks to them beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. We have taken our situations to Jesus Christ. And some of them look so bleak, I'm telling you. With some of the children, the young people, the older children. It just breaks your heart. But let me encourage you. Remember, if you are waiting for 10 verses, keep believing. When you're waiting for 10 verses till Jesus deals with your situation, don't give up. And don't mind what people say about your son. You hear? Don't mind what people say about your niece. You hear? Don't mind what people say about your daughter and your granddaughter and your grandson. You hear? Don't mind what they say. It's not up to them. It's up to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, keep believing that I can heal him. Keep believing I can heal her and make her whole. No matter how long it takes. From verse 24 to verse 35. Jesus Christ is not limited by time, space, place, or nothing like that. He's the almighty creator God. Keep believing. And so when they arrived at the house of the ruler of the synagogue, because that's how the Bible put it, it says that Jesus saw. Sometimes when they change up the translations, you kind of lose the essence, you know? It said Jesus saw commotion and confusion. I ask you a question. What would Jesus see if he came to your house today? What would he see if he came to your house yesterday. Sometime in my house, pure confusion. Mm. Commotion. But I don't give up. I keep believing and holding fast and say, come for worship. What time is it now? Oh, mom, it's 10 p.m. We can't go to bed without worship. Doesn't matter how late it is. When they arrived, Jesus saw a big commotion for people had given up on the girl, you see. Mm -hmm. To them she was dead. All the dreams about her turning lawyer, doctor, and Indian chief and pastor, that was dead. The hope was dead. To some people, your daughter, your son, your granddaughter, and your grandson will never get better. They will never be healthy. They will never come off the drugs. They will never get their life back on track. They will never achieve anything. To them, to some people. Even in your own house, they write them off already. Huh. Some of them write them off because they're covetous, bad mind, envious, and jealous. But Jesus says, now listen to them. Listen to the living, eternal word. Be encouraged. Invite Jesus into the situation. He brings hope. He brings revival. He brings restoration of health. So Jesus said, she's not dead. She is just sleeping. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. And Jesus was not in an altered state of reality. Social workers, psychologists. Jesus was not in an altered state of reality. But Jesus' reality is higher than our reality. Huh? Jesus have a spiritual reality that is more powerful than death itself. So they laugh at Jesus. One Bible say they ridiculed him. That's so nice to way to put it. Another, another one says that they laughed him to scorn. And verse 40 says, when Jesus had put them all Outside. That's my favorite part in the whole Mark 5. When he had put them all outside, I said, that's right, Jesus, put them right out. Huh? He took the father, the mother, and went to where the child was there. Let me tell you, I think it's a joke thing. 
Anybody who ridicule your Jesus, put them right out of your place. Out of your place, out of your space, out of your life. Ridicule who? Jesus? My Jesus. Are you serious now? Anybody that you know, ridiculing your Jesus. Put them out of your presence. People who are ready to bury your dreams, to bury your son and your daughter. Huh? God can do anything. He's a God of the impossible, Russia. When you find the negativity, the negative energy people, tell you what you do. Put them out. Right out. I'm not afraid to speak with boldness and conviction. When you are looking for a miracle, are you looking for a miracle? You're looking for a miracle? Put the naysayers away from you. Do you know a child who is struggling? In our church, in our family, in our home, in our community. Maybe the child is yours. Maybe the child is yours, you know. Adult child. Struggling. Speak life. Speak life. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Says Jesus entered where the damsel was lying. Jesus will go to where that struggling child is. Sometimes I don't know where some of mine are, you know. I'm not pretentious. I speak truth. Sometimes I say, what time is it? Well, where is, uh -huh. I don't know where him is. You cry to Jesus Christ. Jesus will go where the child is. The child won't come to church. Jesus will go to where the child. The child won't come down for worship. Jesus will go to where the child is. Jesus Christ is willing to go. You have to believe. He will go to where your dying child is if you ask. Keep believing. And so I'm going to end soon because it must be late now. If you know of a child, could be your child, stepchild, grandchild, whatever child. And the condition of the child would suggest that this child is not whole. This child is not well. Lay yourself prostrate before Almighty God. Spread out a picture of the child, literally and figuratively. Take the picture and put it there and pray over the child. Ask Jesus Christ to touch, to heal, to speak to that child. Son or daughter, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Scripture says, then Jesus took the little girl by the hand and spoke beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And Jesus said, give her something to eat for Jesus knows that health I said it before is not just the absence of disease but health includes well-being and wholeness that Jesus calls for food for this little girl demonstrates that he is practically concerned for the child Jesus is not just concerned about momentary health but the maintenance, the restoration, Rochelle, Rochelle, continuous well-being. Jesus Christ cares for children issues. Today, if you have a child in your family, in your community, wherever the child is in the church, remember this. Remember this. Sometimes healing is not an event. Healing is a process. Healing is a process. And it takes time. Believe as you wait. Today, I'm going to invite you as I close to raise your hand as you stand in the gap for a child. 
You know the child. You know where the child is in your family, in your home, in your community. I don't know where the child is, but you know where the child is. Because sometimes when the children are dying, the parents can't help but just pour out their soul to anyone who will listen. If you know of that boy, that girl, I'm going to ask you to just whisper their names. I can't be everywhere to hear the name, but the Holy Spirit is beside every one of you. He will hear the name and take it to the throne of the Most High God in groanings that cannot be uttered for that child. And so I invite you, whether it's a big child, a little child, an adult child, teenage child, school age child, regardless of the age of that child, if you know of a child, stand. We're going to pray. We're going to go to Jesus Christ, and we're going to lay our hearts prostrate before him. We're going to earnestly beg him to touch that child. And at this time, I'm going to ask you just to say the name of that child. Whisper the name of that child as I pray. Let us pray. Master Healer, touch our children once again. With your precious holy hand, we pray. Let a mighty rushing wind come into Root Church today. I pray, God, that you will blow in our families. Blow in this church Blow in the community and touch our children once again. Wherever they are, whatever they are doing this blessed Sabbath day, we are crying for our sons. We are praying for our daughters. Our daughters, our sons, our children need health and wholeness. We pray, O oh God, that you will come. Come, Jesus, and lay your hands on them, that they may be healed that they may live and behold. Oh, Father God, you who are the life-giving God, you who are life itself, I pray that you will speak to them beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, Wonderful Words of Life. Sing them over again to me. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sing them over again. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words.
Let us pray. This is for all our children. A Jewish blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Give you peace. Give you blessing. Give you wholeness. Give you health. In Jesus' name, amen. church say amen say let the church let the church say amen let the church say amen God has spoken so let the church so let the church say Praise God. Um, is it okay to say you enjoy a sermon? I really enjoyed the message today, Pastor Dean. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and um, you, the women's ministry's leader, um, she was announced that she needed to come back to preach part two of the sermon. You heard that, right? You heard that? Just making sure you were listening. Um, but thank you. You did a wonderful job in combating children and health. Um, wonderful use of the passage. Thank you so much. I, I have so many um, nuggets I'm taking away today. Ella Perry, what are you taking away today? I'm going to put you on the spot. What are you taking away today? Get rid of those people to your life. Put them out. Put them out to your life. Put them out to your presence. Put them out to your space. When they're ridiculing your Jesus. Um... Uh, Jesus says, but don't listen to those who will write off your children, but take, um, but listen to Jesus, the living word, because he has the final word. Um, you know, I, I want to also say that um, if you're caught between 10 verses, when Jesus is busy, deal with other people's issues and problems just keep believing just keep believing um, it's such a beautiful word today thank you Pastor Dean um, healing is a process huh? you like that one here? you like that huh? healing sometimes is not an event it's a process patiently wait on the Lord he's got to put you to the crucible sometimes um, and many times we go and we, we have surgeries and so forth and we give the doctor all the praises. But the preacher says what? Jesus heals where doctors get what? The money and the credit. But Jesus is the one who does the healing. And we must be so um, intent on giving God the glory. Um, because every um, ounce or inch of knowledge that the doctors have comes from him comes from him well we had a feast today thank you pastor for this message today and it wasn't long i was waiting for more honestly i wasn't just saying don't stop now <laughs> but um which means that whenever you preach short you must be invited back yeah thank you so much god has been good i want just to remind the intergenerational corral that you have practice today at 4 30 
and church is over and early enough for you to go home, eat well, come back if you have to go home. But if you have to stay, there's space downstairs to have your lunch. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for the message today. By the way, she is the first elder for the Oakville Church. Um, it's just so like she wanted to leave. <laughs> but we, we'll have you for sure. It's not that far. We'll, we'll have you for sure. God bless you. Where are your boys? One was helping you. I see two. Where's the other one? Home? Okay, okay. Two are here. And you're doing the good, good thing. Help your mother up the stairs. I, I hope you keep doing it all through your life. Okay. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Praise team. Please sing us out as we prepare for the um, health uh, presentation this afternoon of, at 5.30. It's on the website. Huh? On Zoom. On Zoom. And so everyone can attend. God bless you. And Bible class at 7 o'clock. Thank you. And please be reminded not to walk in front of the cameras as we dismiss. Happy Sabbath, church. Faithful is our God. Save me.
He's a good God. He's holy. I'm taking it back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. We're going to try to believe for it from the top. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. Whew. But they don't know you like we do. They say they say this mountain can be moved. They say these chains will never break. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. But they don't know you like I do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard that there is no way through. We heard the tide will never change. We heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power. There is power in your name. So much power. So much power in your name. Say, move the unmovable. Say, move the unmovable. Move the unmovable. Break the unbreakable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe. Say, God, we believe. God, we believe. For From the impossible. The impossible.
words, we're going to now put an exclamation mark on it. You said it. I believe it. It is done. Let's say that. You said, I believe. You said, it is done. Can you say, you said, I believe. I believe. You said, you said.
for lifting us out of circumstance and situation. We thank you, Lord. For lifting us out of sickness and poverty. We thank you, Lord. For lifting us out of a downcast mindset. We thank you, Lord. Anybody in here know you serving a real God? There are some things I may not know There are some places I can't go Of this one thing That God is real So I can see Him in my soul There are some things mm -hmm.
Is, is he real? Is he real to you? I mean, this is not just play. This is not just entertainment. It's not just a habit of going to church every Sunday. Why don't you just get up and tell seven people that God is real. And he's real to me.
pressed with all my heart Offered to a friend who took my place And ran a course I could not start And when he saw in full Just how much his love would cost He still went the final mile Between me and heaven So I would not be lost Were it not for grace I can tell you where I've been Wandering down some pointless road to nowhere When my salvation up to me And I know how that will go the battles I would face Forever running But losing the race Were it not for grace Forever running But losing the race Were it not for Jehovah's grace